So this is a high Tatras mountain range, a beautiful place, Alpine Look. We used to hike it with my dad. Uh, all those uh, peaks on it, there's just something like uh, 6,500 uh, feet above the sea level. So not, not really so big peak, at least it looks like, and the whole area is about 100 square miles. All of that used to be a beautiful resort. Those uh, a lovely, a lovely forest you see, they are replacement for the original natural forest which was growing there and uh, was cut for various purposes, grazing one of them. And then this spruce was replanted to stress the alpine look of the whole thing and uh, was loved by everybody, but it was also a uh, fire risk and uh, uh, environmentally very unstable and think and distant out to be source of the catastrophe that came in 2004. Uh, hurricane uh, like winds came in the winter and this is what happened with almost half of the whole area of forest there. To add what insult to the injury, a few months after the hurricane, the broken forest there got fire. Fire also caught a little bit of uh, forest that survived uh, the damage itself and the whole nation was just sad because well this this mountain range is on the border between uh, Slovakia and Poland and loved by both countries and both nations and now the most beautiful places were gone and everybody was immediately smart what to do with it now, we under, everybody understood that there is a risk of erosion of bark beetle uh, spreading out of, uh, of this area and uh, loss of recreation use, uh, use practically all the, all the area, all those resorts uh, losing business for one generation. Local forestry wanted to clear the area and plant new forests. Traditional methods. Now, environmentalists went uh, directly opposite way. Let's the forest heal. It will grow again. It will grow in a natural way. The forest itself will find the optimal mixture of plants and so on. Now, people and water, which, uh, which was already established at that time and we, whose father we have here, and I will badmouth him in a few minutes, uh, they suggested to, uh, to do measures to retain the rainfall in place. And uh, they were arguing that moisture will heal the area. Luckily, uh, 205 acres area was put aside uh, for them to test the whole approach. Uh, so 140 volunteers came the next summer. They came not all of them for the whole summer. They was, were taking turns and there were camps and they were doing uh, those uh, rain retention measures using just scrap wood and local materials used because forestry insisted on taking uh, 
timber that was possible to sell and uh, and people and water agreed to the deal so those we have a few pictures uh, from works uh, done as you see if if you do those measures you use everything that's available remnants of the tree scrap wood uh, soil stones you know, holes after uh, uprooted trees and and all that is going to help retain the rain on the spot where it falls down uh, the on he, here you can see that uh, erosion was already starting it, it is starting very, very fast but uh, you not only react to erosion the way that you you concentrate your you know, water retention measures there but you take a guidance from the water you watch where the water wants to flow and uh, you address those spots first so after work like this uh, the results were not immediately visible you can see a little bit few uh, trees there those were planted those were planted that was also uh, under suggestion and activity of the owner of the area uh, not believing that there is enough seed uh, for the forest to grow grow itself and the people and water their influence was uh, to push for a good mixture of uh, of those planted trees especially to get uh, pioneer trees there. But what you can see from this picture is that the nature took, uh, took those measures for its own. The, the whole area looked naturally and pretty nice right very short time after, after the intervention. Now, totally different look at the area is after a few years. Uh, you, can, you can see that all that work was worth, worth it. The biodiversity that uh, retained water brought in is impressive if you, if you visit the area still today. 16 years from works done there. And two years after that, uh, people behind the whole activity and thinking put all the idea together and published the book, New Water Paradigm. For those who still do not have them, here is the download link for the English version. And uh, the book, the book is interesting from the point of view they call the term "small water cycle." Uh, and uh, explain it in this well-known picture. Now, who wants me to go through the details the, here? I believe that this uh, whole thing is well known to everybody here if it is not let's leave it for the discussion and here is another another picture from the book which uh, i won't go to details either it is generally showing that uh, oh let's go back yeah without energy from the sun the land which we call dry land, would really be dried. By the gravitation, all the water would sooner or later end up in ocean. So what we call now a problem, a cause of uh, global heating and so on, 
it's the source of all water on the, on, uh, on the land and on necessary for all life outside of ocean. So we do, we do not need to complain about the energy. We need just to look how the energy is used. If there is enough moisture in the region, most of the energy is used to grow the biomaterial and keep the loop running. Just once we remove the forest, we, we, we remove native grass, we turn there just monocultures or things like that, then a lot of energy is turning into sensible heat. After those 15 years from publishing uh, New Water Paradigm, uh, Michael Kravchik got into publishing mood again, and he wrote a chapter for Handbook of Climate Change Management, published this year by Springer. And uh, to read it, you need a Springer open access. There is no free download. However, as I checked, most libraries do have that. So go on, please have a look. The whole thing is written from practical point of view. Here is, uh, are just two examples of pictures of uh, uh, water retention measures in the country. So much for, for advertising here. Now, few words about other approaches other approaches to forest restoration. Planting trees, it is costly. The reaction time, it takes years. Success depends on the rain anyway. When we compare the forest restored 16 years ago, we had on pictures with the forest that was restored by traditional forestry and also with the for uh, with the area that was uh, let for the forest to recover. On both, you see dry spots. You do not see dry spots where the water was used to restore, uh, to restore the forest. Moreover, uh, since people and water did uh, multiple projects after, we learned that planting trees is uh, really not necessary. There is always enough uh, uh, seeds in the in the soil. There, there is always enough seeds brought in by animals or wind. The forest really grows if there is enough water. Now, grazing and browsing uh, animals to, to change the shape of the forest and to protect the forest against uh, fires. Yes, by all means, but it requires the uh, animal management, which is not easy, regardless if it, it, if it is wild animals or agricultural activity. It requires a social acceptance because uh, because of people are people. And anyway, again, you need water. Now, regenerative agriculture, no till, and all those activities, yes, by all means. They are doing on the agricultural land the same thing we argue here to do in the forest. So, Wherever we can increase the organic contents in the soil, we are doing a very useful thing. Uh, rewilding rivers, water courses, creating uh, wetlands. Yes, yes, all of that, all, all of that is slowing down the runoff. 